Welcome back to another Bean Energy having fun with solar panels day. So as y'all know, I've got uh, we had a lot of solar panels. These are actually this is actually a stack for my house that I'm going to put on my roof. Um, but like I've got this stack of misfits here, and they've all got random problems like uh, frame damage or the diodes aren't testing good or something like that. You can see here a couple of them are just missing frame pieces. And so I've been kind of playing around with them and. Uh, one of the things was the uh, diode box on the back. That guy's looking a bit nasty, right? And you can see on the front here, certainly not gonna sell that solar panel as a good used panel, right? But one of the things that people have problems with with these higher voltage panels, these have a 46 volt open circuit. The problem is if you wanna run this on a 12 volt system with an inexpensive charge controller, like one of these. Because tests have been done that these PWM charge controllers really aren't junk as long as you get a high quality one, but they definitely don't work with the higher voltage panels because the MOSFETs in there, I believe this is the problem, MOSFETs in there will short themselves out with that 46 volt open circuit. They're, they want a panel that's below 20 volts or so, which is your 12 volt panel. So what I thought was, it's just a bunch of cells in series, right? And the way these are set up is, is you have the bypass diodes um, up in the junction box. Right here is your, your main, I don't know if it's negative or positive, right? But it goes all the way down. These are all cells in series. You know, each of these is a cell. And then it comes all the way back up. And then it hits a tab where you have a bypass diode running between there, between this, this row and this row. And then it comes all the way back down all the way back up and then another tab where you have a bypass diode between here and here and then all the way down all the way back up to the wire the other mc4 connector so what i thought was at first well why don't we split this into thirds two four six because that would be if this is a 36 volt panel then split it into thirds that would make it a 12 volt or three 12 volt panels right if i had three um i tried that but the problem is these are a bit used and with uh, just these two columns of cells, I would get about 14 volts open circuit, and that's really not enough to charge a you know 12 volt battery because you need to charge up to like 14.6 volts. So that didn't work. So what I ended up doing was on the back of the panel right here, I I cut out a piece so I could get access to this tab right up in here. So I cut the back out of the panel, and I'll show you that on the panel that I did, I got access to that tab. I cut the tab in half so that I can connect onto this side here for one end and this side here for the other end. And then what I essentially have done is created two uh, 20 volt panels or 24 volt panels. Um, that's their open circuit voltage, right? The 46 volts divided by two would be about 23 volts. And then I ran the wires up to the junction box so that I then put them into parallel. So now it's kind of acting like a split cell um, panel, like one of these guys here, right? That's how these are, is this hole here is a panel, and then this here is a panel, and then they're paralleled together so that you just have one set of MC4s off the back. So I've done the same thing, except instead of this being a 46 volt panel with half cells, now they're full cells, and so it makes it into a 12 volt panel. So let's go look at the panel that actually did this to you so you can see what I did, and if this makes sense for you. It's a little bit janky, but maybe you guys have some ideas to make this a little more normal. Here we are at the panel that I've modified. And you can see here where I've connected my wires onto the tabs at the bottom of the panel. And then this wire runs all the way up here to the top. So as I said, these wires run all the way from the bottom here to the top. So I just voltmetered this out, right? From this MC4 wire here down to the tab on my right is going to be a 20 volt panel and then from this mc4 connector and that's the red wire right from this mc4 connector to the black wire that i soldered on the left is going to be a, tw a 12 volt panel which is you know we've got about um about our 20 volt open circuit so i've wired them up so that they're in parallel and now I've got a total of, I should have about 16 amps total coming off of this because the IMP current for this panel is about 8.3 if it's, if it's optimal. So now I have a theoretical, you know, 310 watt panel that's set up as a 12 volt panel instead of a 36 volt panel. So let's go 
um, set this up and we'll see how it's performing. It is getting a little bit late in the day. The sun's starting to set. I think it's like four o'clock, but it's a little late in the year. Um, but we've got our panel sitting here, aiming more or less at the sun. The max that I was getting earlier, I think was about 18 amps. But we'll go ahead and get this little test rig set up here and show you what it's doing. All right, so I've just got a voltmeter here set up on the battery. So right now the battery is fully charged. It's just topping it off right now. Yeah, leave that there. Leave that there. Um, so voltmeter on the battery. I've also got this load tester on the battery so we can pull the voltage down so that the charge controller will peak. So right now you can see that it's, um, it's pulsing into the battery right now. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to hit the load. Get that down to 11 something volts. This is putting like 100 amps onto that battery. All right, so now we're resting at more like 12 and a half volts and we're getting 13 amps into the battery. 13 times 12, eight. It's about 166 watts here in the evening sun. So it's definitely above the 150, 155 watts that you would expect if I only had one side of the panel working. It's getting that charged back up. So there you have it. That is how you run one of these inexpensive PWM charge controllers off of a high voltage solar panel. So the last thing I need to do, and I'll show you here in just a second, is to seal up all of those um, connections on the back of the panel. You definitely don't want any water intrusion or moisture intrusion if you can help it, because that will corrode the metals and you don't want that in a solar panel. That's how you get premature failure. And I now have something that's simple. I'm just thinking if I could take this panel and just attach the little charge controller even to the back of the panel, and I've got a little setup that's basically a 12 volt battery charger. Like it's just kind of neat, even if I just kept it like that. But this could be helpful for RVers that want to run the high voltage panels. And maybe you just want to run the one panel for topping off the battery, not necessarily trying to run a bunch of loads in the, in the cabin. But you don't want to run the high voltage panel and then have to buy a MPPT charge controller that costs just as much as the panel. So this is an option where you don't have to spend 100, 150, 200 bucks on an MPPT charge controller. This is probably a prerequisite of having some very inexpensive panels available to you because you don't want to be hacking up a brand new high voltage panel. You'd rather just go ahead and buy the expensive or some or more expensive MPPT charge controller. But like these panels, they're already damaged. Um, I'm, I really don't feel bad about hacking them up. And I'll silicone these connections all up so that they're watertight. And I'm sure they've got many years of use left in them. So that is the random project from Bean Energy today. Um, I'll see you guys next time. So I promised you guys that I would show you how I would seal this up. And I'll show you how to did the zip ties to keep this wire in place. Here we go. So what we're gonna use here to seal everything up is Sika Seal. Uh, 290 and what this is is it's a neutral curing silicone which um, doesn't harm the metals with an as an acid curing silicone would be. So if you go to seal things up on the back of a panel make sure you use something like this so that you're not damaging it when you go try to save it. Alright so apparently I thought that I recorded actually applying this neutral curing silicone to the solar panel and it didn't. So you guys are gonna have to deal with just seeing it after the fact. And of course, the purpose of this silicone is to um, air seal so that moisture doesn't get down into the panel and cause corrosion. That's the, its primary purpose. So I gooped it up right there where I soldered onto the tabs after scratching the back of the panel to get to it. And then here I've got my zip ties holding the wire on that comes all the way up to here, which is the original junction box. And I gooped it up as well so that everything is sealed up with silicone. And that's all there is to it.